is a talking point tonight. Gmail passwords hacked. How safe really is internet usage in India? And joining me tonight to answer some of those questions which frankly affect all of us because now I'm really getting worried whether the Gmail account that I have on my phone, who knows, maybe that account may well have been hacked as well. Maybe my guest can help me figuring that out. Here in my studio is Rajesh Sharia. He is the president of the ISPAI. Karnika Seth, well-known lawyer cyber in uh, cyber law. She deals specifically in this area. Amit Dube, he is a national cyber security expert. And Kushan Mitra, he is a managing editor, new projects and digital of uh, the Pioneer. Welcome to all of you on the program. Rajeshi, let me just begin with you. And let me just put this question to you. I know that hacking is a very common activity. We keep hearing about this. On this very program, we have invited hackers in the past. But the scale of hacking that we're now talking about, where six and a half lakh passwords, accounts have been hacked. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Uh, when you have entered into the internet media, mm. you will have to face a lot of things. And till date, what is the Indian mentality of chalta hai mm. or kaam chalao is not, not, not working. Mm. You have to be very secured in all the way. I will not say ki that it is a very issue of not a panic, it is an issue of panic. Mm. But we have to take care of our uses hmm. when we are using these devices. We need to be careful of that. Very careful. Okay, I'll, I'll, come, to, I'll come to how we can be careful when it, when it comes to usage of smart devices in a moment. But let me just uh, come to Kushan Mitra. You know, because Kushan, my, my yes. fear actually is that we are now living in a time where by the end of next year, according to various estimates, India is going to have the world's largest population of internet users. We now have a Prime Minister like Mr. Modi who is very bullish on the usage of technology. I mean, I've seen him so many times move around with his iPad. But do you believe, Kushan, that the government, while being very, very serious in terms of bringing technology in governance-related issues, is the government also serious or is it even aware of the kind of challenges which exist when it comes to cyber security? Mupen, very honestly, I don't know if the government is fully aware of all the challenges uh on the cyber security front. Mm. We do have an organization called CERTIN which looks after cyber security um, bu but most private banks, most banks have their own as your correspondent said mm. one of the biggest threats is in the banking and financial sector so most private banks have their own security systems as far as I know, there have been no major breaches of uh, banking or financial sector accounts in India. Uh, that is a big fear. Most of the hacking that you hear about, very honestly, uh, even this particular case, are not so much uh, breaches of security, but what we call social engineering, where somebody uh, gets your password because it's very easy to guess or because you have very lax security yourself. Um, uh, you should have as a password something slightly more difficult to guess. You shouldn't have say for example your birth date, your spouse's or your child's birth date. Hmm. I mean that's what usually happens, these passwords are guessed. Uh, the government is serious because any future, I mean any future war in the future will be, uh, will be a cyber war as well. Hmm. Uh, I think it happened a few years ago when uh, Estonia and Russia had some issues where Russian uh, cyber warriors took down all of Estonia's in digital communications. Hmm. Uh, India has to have a cyber army. We need to have a cyber army. I mean, you know, these are, these are very strong words that you're using, Kushan. But, uh, but, you know, just to come back yeah. to the point of government here, and the reason why I'm raising that point, Kushan, is that mm -hmm. both you and I are aware of the fact that the government, for instance, is very bullish when it comes to dealing with Twitter. I understand that there are, there are workshops which have been held by representatives of Twitter with yeah. various ministers. Now, rather than just encouraging ministers to use Twitter, and that's a, that's a welcome step, I'm not denying that, should, should, do you not think, Kushan, that maybe making people aware of the kind of challenges, cyber security, should that also not be taken up at an, as a national mission? I think the children of today are very aware of their own security. They, they know what they are doing when they are online. Mm. Um, yes, some of them do very stupid things as you recently heard about the Hollywood picture leak mm. where people were taking uh, 
what I can best describe as naughty pictures of themselves and they're uploading it and somebody broke into Apple's iCloud system and leaked those pictures. Hmm. Um, something when it's out there in the digital world, whether you meant it to be leaked or not, can be leaked very easily. Hmm. Um, I think people do need to be aware. I think uh, maybe in schools and colleges we should spend some more time teaching children the values of privacy, digital privacy and uh, password security as, as well. Yeah, hmm. you're right over there. You we know, should do that. that that's, I think that, that's an important point. You know, because Amit Dubey, the, the truth is that what do we, uh, what, what's a very, let's say, a very common understanding, a layman's understanding of cyber security. As Kushan was pointing out, please change your password. So if I have a, a Gmail account or a Hotmail account or a Yahoo account or whatever, please change your password. That, does, does the entire concept of cyber security, does it begin and end with changing of your password? No, it's not limited to password. Hmm. Actually, it, it, it also explore, explore your uh, entire personality on social media. When you are using a Facebook, you are sharing so much personal contents. People know what you like, what you don't like. Hmm. And they can hack your accounts very easily because hmm. it helps them to do phishing. It helps them to send you Trojans. Are you saying that it's easier for it's people to easier. hack into Facebook it's accounts? Easier. If you are using Facebook, it's very, very easy. And any and what the word they have used, social engineering. Hmm. The social engineering becomes automatic when you are using a Facebook and I know what you like and dislike. I'll hmm. keep showing you the contents hmm. which you are lured to be clicked. So no, you click now, it, now, you know, I, I, I just want my viewers to be very clear. And that's a very important point that you're flagging off here. Are you saying that on the basis of the kind of content which is put up on Facebook, it is possible for a hacker or any individual to guess my password or whatever security firewall I may have created on the basis of the kind of information that I've already put up on Facebook? Exactly. And Mr. Chaube, I had a very good discussion on the same topic, crime investigation through social media analytics. Hmm. Now, it, it sounds very new topic, but it is happening. For every 40 minutes, we are getting Facebook crimes on in New York uh, police department. In India also I have helped police department to solve many crime cases through Facebook analysis. Mm. So when people are using Facebook to do crime, there are other way around also that people are using Facebook to hack you to or hack to, you. Yeah, to breach your personal security or, or to compromise your system. So Karnika, where does the yeah. problem lie? I is it just that we don't understand yeah. what cyber security is all about or are, or you know, as Kushan and Namit both are saying that maybe simply we just don't yeah. understand, we don't care. No, I'd like to address this issue in two prongs. Number mm. one, when it comes to uh, attacks, what, where do we face the attacks from? It's not only the malware. We mm. have a, a process called steganography, mm. by which even uh, simple music files or video files could have hidden malware, keyloggers or trojans or other kinds of malware, which would steal away the personal sensitive passwords or other information, including credit card passwords, mm. from a person's computer or a mobile phone. And not only the malware that I'm talking about or the attacks are through, uh, you know, sending these kind of files which could be downloaded like e-books. Mm -hmm. It could also uh, travel through uh, social media platforms where people share a lot of files and information. It could also be through phishing attacks or in the modern day balance. Now we have other, other uh, you know, hybrid attacks like the wishing attacks, which is use of VOIP over hmm. uh, on, on the internet, hmm. or even uh, I would say smishing, which is SMSs. Hmm. So uh, we see a lot of crime. I mean, no, so let me, let me get this clear. And again, you know, I want this debate to be very factual and very informative for all my viewers. Are you saying, for I'm instance, you know, I, I use an Android phone, for instance. Yes. Are you suggesting that when I click a picture, through my Android phone, irrespective of what I do with that picture. I may take the picture of my child just to look at that picture 10 times a day while I'm, while I'm at, at work. Yes. Are you suggesting it's possible for someone to get into my phone Absolutely. and access our entire album? Absolutely. So it's how do I prevent from how that How many happening? people really actually, uh, would, once before they're downloading any information or even uh, you know sending an email, do, hmm. do they bother to use a digital signature? Hmm. Or do they bother to check if uh, you know, they've used any antivirus before downloading of that particular application or that particular uh, say game or could be anything. Hmm. So there are not many people who even uh, you know have bothered to read the terms and conditions of a website, for instance. So for so for so, so you know let, let, let's get this clear. So you're saying that every time, for instance, you know, you download an app, what happens? You you go to the Play Store if you're on an Apple product. You go to you go to the Apple Store there if you're on on some other product. There is a there's a Play Store for Samsung and other devices. Right. When you click on a particular app, it takes you to a page where it is asking you for permission. 
it is asking for your permission to access our personal details it will say I, you click on i agree and, and that's it. if you've not read the terms hmm. it would form a key I, I, I agreement i don't think that i would have read those terms ever and i have consent. a lot of apps on my you've phone you've given already. the consent to use whatever information you've stored in that it could be anything it could be photographs it could be even your credit card passwords or a net banking pins which you would have saved in your phone which would just travel across and without your uh, authorization so kushan how does one what is what is a safety firewall then uh, what is what is the other form of safety uh, i want to know kushan which is which is beyond this password okay. you have you you have you have something called two factor authentication on uh, google as well as on uh, apple hmm. by which if i access my account uh, from another device hmm. say for example i also have an android phone and i just changed my android phone um, and i had to sign in with my google account again so google actually sends me an sms to the number that i have registered with google mm -hmm. and uh, nobody else can change that number and this is what is called two factor authentication hmm. now that two factor authentication can be broken it can also as uh, the pictures as i said the hollywood leak hmm. of uh, pictures of jennifer lawrence and all pro proved that sometimes two factor authentication isn't enough hmm. uh, until it is actually specifically asked for and uh, many people because they choose convenience over privacy uh, they they disable two factor authentication because you know you who's going to wait for an sms hmm. um that way you have to praise the reserve bank of india which has uh, forced two factor authentication on all credit card transactions uh, so therefore if i use my credit card on online mm -hmm. i have to either enter a one time password mm -hmm. or i have a digital password which i have to enter right uh, so nobody can misuse your credit card uh, it, by uh, just giving your credit card number and the cvv number so that's one solution you say that they, that, that that's a solution yes. that people should be aware of uh, i i i beg to differ here yes ma'am because yes. there are a lot of cases where even mobile phones are not safe if if you're getting an otp on the phone for instance there have been reported cases where even duplicate sims have been issued hmm. if you remember hmm. and the otp would be probably sent on that number hmm. because the number belongs to the so you know, what do you do then when so in that kind of a scenario what do you do that's what we need tighter security so that, that, i it, think that the issue of a duplicate that. sim for instance they have hmm. to be tighter security parameters the identification of the person the photograph hmm. everything should be checked kushan kushan you saying something i think over there that, that, that is that is a very uh, criminal act where somebody's actively done something wrong hmm. um that is not just hacking that is uh, actually calling up this, uh, the the uh, telecom company and getting a duplicate sim issued it's not it is not just digital crime it is actual uh, uh, social crime over there hmm. um but uh, and if the telecom company gets fooled hmm. uh, they should be made liable Correct. over there yes, i feel so but, uh, but you know uh, how many of us and you know uh, uh, let's just look at it from an indian context how many of us would be in position because you know i i travel a lot for instance uh, through the countryside through the rural areas in terms of my reportage and i see that it's so easy now to get hold of a smartphone for a few thousand people people download facebook on it and they're so happy you know just clicking away pictures and 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 sharing those pictures without realizing that maybe all that data is being stored somewhere my question to amit to you and to rajesh is this is there some way in which people can be made more aware of the security exactly. part exactly how do you ensure so that in, whether exactly. i have a phone or an ipad or what it, how do i reduce let me put i i know that it, they, there's no 100% solution how do i reduce the possibility of my personal information being misused rather than becoming a panic what i will suggest is that the awareness is the best solution for the user when they are using the internet hmm. they should not take everything lightly when any application is getting downloaded on your smartphone you are right that nobody agree nobody uh, just go towards the agreement what agreement they are accepting hmm. but just they are clicking but one thing we have to understand no application is free hmm. when we are downloading any free songs any free application something is there behind which is creating nuisance into your phone hmm. and they are compromising your contact they are compromising your email ids they are compromising your password and they are compromising a lot of thing hmm. even your photographs even your personal smss in one of the true caller application you are putting a very special name for your wife 
and when the true caller you are downloading your name is going with your number mm. what will happen yes. your neighbor will be able to download that uh, true caller and he will be calling then the honey darling so what do you do so what do you do I, because i'm trying to figure out what the solution see? Mr. Chaube, i think see that as you said that there is lots of thing which is yet to be done from the awareness point of view when you get a friendship request what do you do you just check that whether this person is a friend of some of my friends yeah. that's right. all this is right. the only check that we do. Do we right. actually do some investigation of that person? Mm. He might be pretending that person, but he is actually not that person. Mm. And then you are accepting that request. But once you accept that request, what you are doing? Mm. You are allowing him to access your friends. Mm. Because now you have referred him. You know, that now you that, know him. That, that I think the credibility of so the websites is a very major point. Mm. Because how many people really bother to check who is the real owner of a website, for instance? Right. There are floating websites. And this is a major lacuna in our Indian uh, IT system for the time being that whenever there is a request to register a website, the registrar is not uh, made liable or even has the obligation, mandatory obligation to check who the person is who is registering. Well, it happened with me, you know, and I'll share this experience. I remember a, a, a few, few weeks back, I was, I was trying to do some research on a particular topic that I wanted to do a program on. And while I went on a site, it said that we have the answer before it would have answered that question it just asked me to send in my email and I thought yes. that maybe I would get newsletters on my mail from the site and lo and behold I realized that on my entire contact list every person had been sent a mail that I have invited them to be a part of that platform and I had no idea because suddenly all my friends and everyone who's on my contact list started asking me if I sent them some kind of an invitation and I had not done that so you know your, your point is that be very careful before exactly. you download. before you download anything before yeah, be, you click yes. on that box I accept no, be, no, very, very be very very careful be very careful we cannot, we we cannot block the, <laughs> as you said that we cannot put too much restrictions on registrations because they can register the website at other countries also hmm. they can try it creating proxy service in other countries and then they can approach you Kushan so, so that is not something which can help you a Kushan, lot how do I how do I avoid that how do I avoid that how do I reduce the possibility no, no, of being fooled you can't ever reduce the possibility of being fooled. Somebody is determined to fool you, Bhupen. Uh, in fact, I wanted to bring up the point that people have to be careful about the people they add, as uh, was just mentioned, because uh, I have heard of um, rape cases happening where girls make friends with boys uh, on Facebook, and you know they meet up, and that guy turns out, you know, that takes, you know, that they go out there and they do something, and. Uh, uh, there have been several cases, it's the other way around as well, where a guy thinks, you know, I'm meeting a pretty girl, mm. and he goes to meet her, and, um, uh, you know, he gets robbed or something like that. You have to take precautions on the internet. The internet is not always what it seems, mm. and that is the biggest lesson you have to have on the internet. Uh, don't trust everything you see on the internet, hmm. whether so even if it's on Wikipedia uh, or, yes. or Google. Hmm. Don't, don't trust everything so on the internet. That is the reason of I growing instances of profiles being hacked or the morphing of pictures. But or what about fake cyber security then? No, Kadikaji, no. what about cyber security? Cyber then? security. No, we have, you see, you have we have the, the law in the country. We have the IT Act in But place. do we know what that IT Act is all about? There are hardly no. any people who would understand the IT Act. There are, are there are trainings being imparted now. I've seen workshops in schools, also in in the uh, law enforcement. They are becoming more active. But the general masses, what about them? They no, are the I'm sure part. you you must be dealing uh, with the corporate sector as well. Yes, with with big companies, not Absolutely. just individuals. What is the feedback that you get? Do even do even big companies realize? What really is going well, on I would be very, in the virtual world? I, I, I'm not surprised to say that that there are a lot of companies who won't even have an IT policy in place. Won't even have an IT they policy. They won't even place. have an IT policy. No. Okay. One thing is there. Yeah. Recently, we have done one international event. We have invited the students, hmm. school students over there, hmm. and they were very much concerned about their privacy. Hmm. I will suggest one thing. Yeah. Awareness is the best solution. And another thing, what I will say, don't get panicked. Hmm. Why I'm saying? Because the dream project of our Honorable Prime Minister, Digital India is here. Hmm. 20 million broadband connection is there. Hmm. We are going to test 600 million broadband connection very soon, hmm. where the rural people will come. And re in regards to the certain, I will really appreciate the effort of our Honorable Minister Shri Ravi Shankar Prashad ji. Recently he held the meeting, he was very much concerned about the security and he has t very categorically advised to the certain that we have to do a lot of things. No, no, that's government save. speak. That's yeah. government yeah. speak. My point is that you see, often people don't understand what the government may be trying to do. Awareness. These are all noble words. Awareness. Therefore, yeah. in conclusion, let me ask all of you, starting with you, uh, uh, Amit, if I was to ask you to list one important factor 
that all our viewers must take away from this program so that the next time when they when they are on the on on the internet when they're in the virtual world they are reducing the possibility of being hacked or their information being misused it's very simple every such application which you are using even facebook they offer you the security parameters mechanism how you can protect your security you can create your close net friends group you mm. can create a public group you should not put everything on public group so there are such provisions already but we don't use them because you are not aware of what it. about google plus twitter and all Everywhere these other sites there are security features and mm. you have to set that security so features so you need to go to the settings bit exactly you need to, go to, the you need to get to the security part and then you need to identify what suits your requirements best i will Correct. i will raise one more yeah. interesting fact that there is a there are cases where people are stealing your identity mm. they can create your profile and then they can influence yes. your friends for mm. example mr tom alter his around 8 to 10 facebook accounts are there and he met me and he asked me that amit i don't use facebook <laughs> and i have so many followers mm -hmm. and people used to come and they say that i have connected you on facebook and all mm -hmm. so such kind of things are happening karnika what should be done uh, well tell me same, one important point password. that that people should take not just change password but no, also no. what about the law the same password what, how do i how do i realize how do i realize that there is an important feature in the legal I statutes we, which we, is going to help me we can't expect everybody to be a lawyer however i feel it is now because of our huge dependency on the internet it is i think crucial like we have in school we teach them civics mm. the constitution the fundamental things about constitution we are now introducing them to computers hardware software but i think it's very pertinent at this point to introduce them what is the it law in india what is the so IT that law? they understand where is the privacy where do they cross the line mm. what they can do what they can't do on the internet and what are the repercussions of doing that and kushan mitra one constructive suggestion from you kushan which will ensure that the people who are watching this program do go away with at least one constructive tip from you a very simple one bhupen is to understand uh, the differences between private and public i mean what you put out there in the public domain and what you keep inside your own domain what you should share and what you shouldn't share um these are lessons that children need to learn from their parents as well as the teachers mm. as and and we you should be aware that uh, what gets stored on your phone very often is public okay if you don't want it to go out there don't digitize it okay so if you don't if you be careful in other words you're saying that whatever one puts up yeah. on the net be very very careful because that information that picture that tweet or that that facebook status update may be used in some other way quick final word from you rajesh ji the security what you are taking or the caution what you are taking on the highway road highway the same you have to take on the internet and you have to create a line between the private and the public so you watch when you drive you watch when you clicking away either on your smartphone or on your computers thanks to all my panelists for joining me on this edition of india at 9 i've taken away my tip i know that next time onwards i'm going to be very very careful when i send any email from my phone yes i do have a gmail account and i don't want my gmail account to be hacked so maybe i also need to keep changing my password and i also need to go into that settings bit and see whether i have the requisite security firewall systems in my in my phone and in my other devices or not